head of Canadian fixed income strategy at BlackRock, and she joins us with more on the economy and the markets. Thanks for your time today. Yeah, great to be here. Never a dull moment right now, and even in the broader sell-off we're seeing today, it felt like you had some U.S. economic data that suggested maybe the U.S. Federal Reserve has to stay mm. committed to higher interest rates. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's challenging to make sense of the economic picture right now. How would you characterize it? I think it's, it's certainly a complex situation, as you outlined. On the one hand, we're still seeing inflation trending well above central bank targets, right? In Canada, that was a, a key point that the Bank of Canada really focused on, that there's sort of slow progress on the inflation front. At the same time, in Canada, we are seeing weakening on the economic picture as we're seeing these rate hikes work their way through the economy. So the, I think the really key balance will be, are we going to see continued downward momentum on inflation? as we see the demand and supply uh, and balance work out. It's been interesting to watch this, what feels like a pickup in the equity sell-off, because mm. you folks in the bond world <laughs> seem to have been worried a lot earlier in this, you know, this, this challenge of keeping rates high as the economy is cooling in an effort, I guess, to fight inflation. Definitely. I think that's been our view at BlackRock for some time. We do feel that we are in a higher for longer environment, right? Central banks and developed markets are certainly uh, at or near terminal rates in terms of how high they need to rate hikes, in our opinion. But at the same time, we do think that even if they're done hiking rates, we're not necessarily pivoting immediately to a rate cut scenario. We do think that inflation is going to be sticky, persistent in that backdrop in for higher interest rates for, for a longer environment for some time. And I think market expectations, as you alluded to, are repricing and digesting that as we've seen the moves in yields in recent weeks. And, you know, there's a, these broader economic questions like when you've got these multi-year highs for these bond yields as a result of the bond selling, does that increased borrowing costs mm. for companies, and you get tastes of what companies are saying about their balance sheet with corporate earnings. But I guess, as someone who's trying to figure out investing strategy throughout all of this, as we take a look at the, the Canadian 10-year bond yield right now, north of 4%, I think it's worth pointing out that we don't see these yields every day. So there is a component of the investor group that is saying, well, hold on a second, does this spell opportunity for me? So how should we think about that part of Definitely. it? Definitely. I think we've increasingly seen from investors that they are looking at these higher yield levels. And we haven't seen levels like this in, call it, 10 to 15 years. So certainly, uh, increasingly, a part of the investor community is recognizing the opportunity that could exist at these more attractive entry points from, from a yield perspective. And we're starting to see, I think, flows move into that direction as well. Some cash coming off the sidelines, taking advantage of these higher yields that we're seeing across global bond markets, but in Canada as well. And, and we're seeing that in terms of industry flows, industry trends in XBB, for example, our iShares core Canadian universe bond ETF, we've seen about a billion of flows so far this month. So certainly yeah, that's compelling a opportunity, yes. Yeah, no, and it's a helpful, I mean, to connect the dots for our audience as well. If you think about a lot of times in the stock market, people look towards things that, you know, investments that have high dividends, et cetera, like that. There, there is a bit of a tug of war for investor attention when generally yields are higher. You, you reference one of those core ETFs that, that, that you, you offer at BlackRock, but um, for those who are trying to make sense, mm. you know, you've got government debt. That's right. You've got corporate bonds. You've got a number of hybrid products out there. You've got products out there that try to also account for some of the inflationary risks. So there's a lot of different fixed income opportunities. How do you make sense of all of them? Yeah, I think that's, that's sort of been one of the, the key topics for investors as well. Right? Looking at the fixed income market broadly, yields are higher across the board. So where is the right place to really seek those opportunities? Um, I think it's really dependent on ultimately the investor objective and what they're looking to accomplish. Uh, for many uh, investors who are looking for that step out of cash alternative, staying high quality, staying in something that's more stable like XFR or floating rate ETF can be that option because they can benefit in this high rate environment is yielding north of 4%, um, but ultimately still, still minimizing volatility given that it's close to zero duration. People are familiar with variable rate mortgages. Does a floating rate bond product sort of follow the back and forth of, of, of rates and, and yeah. what the market interprets on rates? Exactly. So XFR, the yield on that actually tends to move in tandem with central bank or Bank of Canada policy rates. So we've seen the yield on that 
move up in lockstep with Bank of Canada rate moves. And we do think that in a higher for longer environment, it can continue to offer that compelling yield level for investors. Okay, so